Now, all of these helper functions on the side are not necessary. We don't need to keep it. So we're going to delete this. We're going to delete this and our match function is still going to work. Now, so what's happening here is that see, this is our index function and we gave it this entire table and then we find the row number we need in that table and then we find the column number we need in that table. So basically the way you want to look at it, it's going to be like one, two, so let me do this really quickly. So in our index function, we selected this is the range. And in this range, we have row numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then column numbers one, two, three, four, five. So for example, if we want to get the price for this stock number, this 430, we need to go to row six, right? And column four. So row six and column four, that will be that 130. And that's the way we're going to find that. Now, if we want the product name for that item, we're going to go row six, column one. And that's what we do with our index and match. Only instead of hard coding six and one, we're basically finding those with our two match functions. The first match function is going to find the row number by searching the stock number in this one single column and finding which number is the row we need to retrieve. And the second match function is going to look for this label on top to find which column is it that we need to retrieve. Now, what's nice about this is that we could now just reuse this formula in many different columns without really changing the formula if we do our locking right. And what I mean by that, if I want to be able to just use the same formula in this second uh, row as well, so let's say we have another stock number here, and I want to be able to just drag this down, and I want this to work for this one too. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here and... I'm going to do some mixed cell reference locking. Now, the whole mixed cell reference locking probably needs an entire video on its own, but an easy way to think about this, if I'm looking at this B16, B16 is the stock number. Now, if I look at all of these stock numbers, the first and second and third, all of these are in B column. So I'm going to add a dollar sign for that B column. The same way, if I look at C14, which is this C14 is this label. Now I'm gonna look at all different labels and all these labels are in row 14. So I'm gonna add a dollar sign for that 14. So just look in the reference and see all of the items of the same type. If they're in a row, just put a dollar sign for the row. If they're in a column, put a dollar sign for the column. So now, once all the ranges are locked, see the first range is locked, second, third, and they all have four dollar signs, that's good. And then we need mixed locking for our match lookup values. So B column for this and 14th row for this. I'm gonna hit enter. And now if I drag this down, went a little too far there, it should work for this and this item for both. And not only that, I could also drag this this way, right? And drag this down and it's gonna give me the cost for those items too. So why am I getting the cost? Because in this column, the label says cost. So it's gonna look and find cost is number five and it's gonna get us the fifth item. Now, if we switch it to, let's say type, we should get the type. Now I could just go here and for example, do something like this. I want price and cost as well. And then I can just drag this formula. And then the same formula works for every single column from that data set. So that's how we do two dimensional index and match. Let me do this on a more realistic data set example. So right now this was all on the same tab, easy to look through and understand. Now, if we go to this transactions tab, on this tab, we have this data and we have all of these different sales where we sold the stock numbers. 
Now, what we want to do, we want to get some related information to each one of these stock numbers. So for example, for this stock number, we want to go to our product table and find that stock number. I believe it was this one and maybe get the brand for that particular stock number. Maybe also we might want to get the cost or something like that. Let's start by getting the brand. So I'm going to go ahead and select the brand, right? Go back to my transactions table and just add that column brand. And now I'm going to do my index and match to make this happen. The first thing is we have to search for the stock number and find which row is that stock number in, in this column of stock numbers. So I'm going to start with my match function equals match. Search key is going to be this stock number. This is what I'm searching for comma, I'm searching for that in this products table. So that's going to be in this tab, I'm going to click here, click on the second row, and shift down, we'll go down. And I could just do control shift down to highlight this range. But I want this to be dynamic. And if people add more items, I want to include them. So I'm simply going to remove that last reference for the row. So I'm going to end up C2 colon C, and I'm going to press F4 to lock the range, comma, and then zero for exact match, close parentheses, hit enter. And it says one. So it looked for this item stock number, and it found it it was in the first position, which you can see it is perfect. So we found that now I'm going to go back, highlight this match function, command X to cut it and start with index function. Now, if I'm doing just a single dimensional index and match, all I have to highlight now is what I want. I want the brand, right? So the reference in my products table, I'm going to go back here. It's going to be the brand. So again, not including the label on top, I'm going to start with this and do something like this and remove the last reference just like that and F4 to lock it and comma, and then it's asking me for the row number. So I'm going to get that row number with that match function that I just had. So I'm going to paste my match function and close my parentheses for my index function, hit enter. So this should give me the brand for this item. So right now, if I just drag this down, this should work and should retrieve the brand for each one of those items right there on the screen, I'm going to undo this drag down. So that's a single dimensional index and match. Now I'm going to take this and convert this to a two dimensional index and match. So for that, we simply need to just instead of highlighting this product as a single column, which is what I did, I just went there and I just included that one column, which was just brands, I'm going to actually go and highlight the whole table. So if I remove that, and go back to my products, now I'm going to select starting from row two again, but instead of just one column, I'm going to just grab this. And again, I could highlight the whole table, but I want this to be dynamic. So I'm just going to exclude the last row reference. So that's going to go from A2 through G. So F4 to lock that, right? And that will get me the whole table. Now, because I selected the whole table in this range, my match function is still going to give me the row. But before we close this index function in the end, I'm going to do comma, and then I'm going to select which column do I actually want returned. So if I want the name of the product, that would be column one, two, it's the second column. So I would do something like two, and that should return the name of the product, which it does. Now, the only thing is that I don't want to hard code this two here. I want to replace this two with a match function that's going to find me where is the item I'm looking for. So what I'm looking for is the brand in this case. And what we need to do, we need to find this brand label in this list of product labels on top. And we have to find that it's one, two, three, four, five. It's in the fifth column of this particular table. So in order for me to do that, again, I'm going to do that separately here on the side, I'm going to do equals match. Now the search key is going to be that brand, the, the actual label, comma, I'm looking for that in this product table. So in this case, 
I need to have labels. So I'm gonna select these. Now in this particular case, I want to also make sure that if they add more columns here this way, it still works. So instead of going through from A1 through G1, which I could do, and this will work just fine, but to make it more dynamic, I'm gonna go here and remove the last column reference. So I'm gonna go and remove the G, and it goes from A1 through the whole row. F4, again, to lock this reference. So I just made a little error there. So let me just redo this again. So I'm gonna highlight this remove the G reference and yeah so apparently Google Sheets when you press F4 it removes the way I did the reference so I'm gonna have to do this in a different way so I'm just gonna highlight this start over equals match so I'm gonna search for this brand comma go back to products highlight this and I'm gonna press F4 first to lock it and then I'm gonna go back here and remove this reference for my G column because apparently when you do this and then press F4, it removes the row reference in the end, comma, and this needs to be exact match, zero. So you can already see it gives me five. It says the brand is one, two, three, four, fifth column. Perfect. Close parentheses, hit enter, and that should give me that five in our match function. So it gives us the column index. Now I'm gonna go back, copy this match function, not including the equal sign. Go back to my index and match and replace this column index, which used to be two, with my match function. I'm gonna hit enter. I don't need this. I'm gonna remove that. Now this gives me the brand because this label on top says brand. Now if we go back here and replace it with, let's say, size, it should give us the size. Now, I don't need the size, I'm gonna get the brand. Now, to make sure this works when we drag, we need to make sure this is locked correctly. So we go back here, again, the ranges, all the ranges need to be locked. This range is locked, this range is locked, this range is locked, that's good. Now, B2 is this stock number, right? Now, all stock numbers are located in B column, so dollar for that B. And then the second one is H1, H1, so it's covering here. H1 is this label brand. All the labels are in row one, so I'm going to go ahead and add a dollar sign for one, but not for H. So just like that, I'm gonna hit enter. Now, let's say I can drag this down by double clicking on it. So that's all the brands for each one of those stock numbers. But another thing is that for any other column I need from that products table, all I have to do is now just put the names of columns I want to actually have. So let's say we want the product ID and product name. I'm just gonna paste them here. Maybe we also want the cost for this product, right? So I'll go here, oops, not here, paste it in here, maybe just auto size this columns, double clicking in the middle there so we can see what's going on. So now all I have to do is just drag this right. And then if I highlight this and double click, that should finally drag that down. And now we might want to double click again to auto size this, but we can see now we got every single column from that other table we wanted related to that stock number using this two dimensional index and match. You just have to be careful and remember that it's all tied to this label on top. So if you mistype it, you don't have to type uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. But for example, if you did something like brand and a space, it doesn't match because the other one doesn't have the space in the end. So I have to match exactly the same name of the label that's on this other table to make this work. So if I go back here and do brand, that should give me brand. Now, if I don't want the brand there and I changed my mind, and let's say it should be the size, I 
I just put size instead of brand and it just works and that's how you do index and match one dimensional or two dimensional and that's exact match index and match so in next video we'll do some index and match using non-exact match to see how that works but for this one that should do it thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one